Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hey. Oh, hey, hey, Mark Thompson. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Yeah. So, um, first thing I want to do is, what got you into wanting to do acting for a living? Oh man, uh, I had some like I I was in some school plays, and I think. I had some teachers that kind of were suggesting, hey, you might really enjoy this. And my mom was super supportive and kind of like got me involved in some improv classes and some uh, acting classes at a pretty early age. And it was just something I really enjoyed doing and kind of, you know, felt like it's just something I'm reasonably good at. And I really enjoyed it and then just kind of pursued it from there. Um, so. Yeah. Right, because I read that you also <laughs> you enjoyed acting so much that you went to NYU to School of the Arts, right? Yeah, like that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I remember um, the last actor I interviewed, his name is uh, Bob Klein. He's also went to NYU too. So, but oh, that was cool. like a while back before you went to it. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, that's like an interesting story because many of the actors I already interview, uh, Mike Pollock, which I, you already know who he is. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Klein, they told me they started their whole acting, professional acting career in New York. Yes. But with Bob's case, he moved to LA to pursue more voiceover opportunities and whatnot. And, you know, his career took it from there. Right. Where are you calling in from or where are you, where are you living? Oh, I'm from uh, Philly, PA. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So nice. Yeah, so we're in the same time zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you, your sweatshirt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was trying to locate some of your creatures on here, too. So <laughs> I think <laughs> I, can't, yeah, I can't find really them. really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before I want to dive in further, so how are you doing health-wise? Because I checked on your Instagram that you had some kind of illness. I forgot the name of it. I think some. Yeah. How are you feeling so far? I'm I'm doing much better. Thank you for asking. I uh, it was basically in December. I went to go for a, a run, and all of a sudden I got this really intense headache, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what was going on. And like, I started feeling really nauseous. And I came in, and, uh, right. and basically, my wife took me to the hospital, and it, they said it was a subarachnoidal hemorrhage, which uh, is a fancy way of saying like a, a brain a brain bleed. So it wasn't an aneurysm. But it, it was, uh, they, they don't know exactly what caused it. But um, so they had to put a tube in my head and drain a bunch of fluid out and stuff. So, um, but I'm doing much better. And uh, I got the okay from the doctor today to kind of be a little bit more active and try to, you know, to that. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. So, not yeah, because I was seeing that you and your family, you like to go out so much and whatnot. Like, I was praying that nothing. Oh, thank you tragic what happened to you because you're yeah. you're definitely a decent dude <laughs> oh i really appreciate that thank you yeah yeah, yeah so like seems, seems um clear. moving on from uh nyu you graduated around 1997 right yeah uh, is that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah 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 okay. <laughs> yeah because that was uh yeah yeah that's that's correct 97 you got your facts down that's <laughs> yeah, yeah i was trying to you know more that. than i do <laughs> I I can with you and make sure we go along with this interview and then suddenly what would you with you graduating with like in like a performance arts degree, right? Yes, uh, I got a BFA, a Bachelor in Fine Arts gotcha. uh, in acting. Okay. Um, and and the way NYU does it is you, um, you you take your kind of acting classes. Uh, I want to say like three days a week from different acting studios in the city, and then uh, you were oh. taking your core kind of liberal arts classes as well. So I had like you know kind of English and, and, and different, you know, humanities type courses uh, on top of that. But, uh, but I, all my kind of acting classes, I, mm -hmm. I spread out to a bunch of different studios throughout the city. So that, so that kind of jump started your voiceover career, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was actually while I was in college, because I wasn't setting out to do voiceover specifically, I just wanted to be an actor or performer. And my sophomore year, uh, there was a posting uh, for an audition for a cartoon on MTV, and I auditioned for that. And I didn't get the sh the show that I auditioned for didn't go into production, but another show did called Daria. Uh, yeah, it was a spinoff of Beavis and Butthead, and that was like my first <laughs> ever like professional job and kind of my first ever big break. And and that kind of like started my whole voiceover career, like because because then after that I just kind of 
started getting other things. I'm sorry, you more sober career. Yeah, so. <laughs> and with that, with that said, so what got you in collaboration with the now defunct Four Kids production? Um, yeah, so I, I um, had been doing Daria for a while, and I, um, I actually I got involved in Four Kids because I auditioned for Pokemon. I think through a backstage ad or something like that. And at the time, Pokemon was still with Taj Productions. Yeah. So I did. I did a couple episodes with them as like a. I don't know. Yeah, like a couple of guest roles and whatnot. Yeah. So I started with Taj, and then I I guess Four Kids got the license to Pokemon. Yeah. So then that was kind of my gateway over there, Mm -hmm. and then you know Four Kids was like this like amazing uh, kind of mecca or not not mecca but like it was like a, it was a huge you know yeah it was a huge for a lot of cartoons time. uh uh at that time and so once you started working on one show they started passing you around and yeah <laughs> to other shows so so yeah, they got to do a lot we, of different cartoons yeah me and mike paula talked about that saying the minute he auditioned for a role they started casting him and other things too and they even asked him to audition for this role that's how he yeah. made up the part of dr eggman yeah, it was awesome because like, you know, there were like at any given moment, there were four or five shows in production and, you know, you would yeah. see all the actors, you know, coming and going and past each other in the halls. And it was yeah. it was, uh, <laughs> it was a heyday. It was awesome. It was a really great time. Yeah, and I bet you made friends with a lot of them, like uh, Eric Stewart, Veronica yeah. Taylor, Rachel Lillis, Tara oh, Sands, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, Megan Hongsett, Wayne Grayson. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. And speaking with uh with Eric Stewart, do you, do you do you guys still hang out in some kind of form like online gaming and whatnot? Uh so we uh I haven't gamed with anybody in a while. Um okay, I yeah. got I got too loud in my living room and I and I <laughs> my wife up. So I, I, I got out of the the gaming uh, at yeah. night, but uh but I miss it and I, I would love to do it. So but I just saw Eric recently, uh uh, and and it was awesome and and uh, it was great. I hadn't seen him in a long time, but he's living in Nashville now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I got to see him for, uh, a couple of weeks ago or or a month ago, and it was or several months ago. anyway. But it was awesome. It was it was good to see him again. That's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also want to talk about your your first lead role, if I recall correctly, uh, Kid Muscle from the show Ultimate Muscle. So how was that? Yeah. How was that gig for you? <laughs> oh man, it was crazy. Like I I. I really loved doing it. There were there were definitely <laughs> moments where I was like, "Are they gonna? Is this for kids? Like, are they on TV?" I was like, "What is happening?" Um, but I, you know, we we definitely were kind of given the license to like play and have fun and you know, yeah. um, and just go big and you know, and it was so so was, uh, and that's kind of what I like to do vocally with characters and stuff like that. So we we uh we really had a lot of fun on that show and eric was directing me in that and nice. uh, and like you said it was my first big one so i was i was kind of really excited about it and and yeah. <laughs> and proud of that one and and it, there was definitely a lot of really weird humor on there <laughs> like really, you know, but uh I, you know it's it's funny because now i'll kind of meet people that watched it but at the time i was like who's watching this like what is going on <laughs> right, right. who is this show for so um and it was you know my it, it, it was kind of like my first taste of how out there anime can get and how like you know kind of like really big and yeah. crazy it can get so it was it was it was really fun I, I i really it definitely has a special place in my heart like i i like that show a lot. i can respect that a lot of <laughs> well, a lot of actors saying when they get cast and leave it is always like a special place because you know you're really the center the center of attention when it comes to roles like that yeah <laughs> And then um, I try to research this um, the stint you did with the Yu Gi Oh series. I noticed yeah. that your first major role was Duke Devlin, but yes. I'm pretty sure you did kind of some additional voices before that booking. Yeah, I, I, I they all start to blend together after a while. Like I, I, I think Duke may have been the first thing on Yu Gi Oh, okay. but maybe I'm wrong. And then I did like Valen and Raphael. Raphael yeah. Um, and there, and I'm, I'm sure there were like, you know, man A and man B, you know, like you <laughs> guy in guy in cafe or guy in the crowd and that, that type of thing. But, um, but yeah, Duke Devlin was, uh, I think the first thing I did on, on Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. And yeah. you, 
you got to reprise him in the uh, recent Yu-Gi-Oh movie, movie too. <laughs> yes, yes. Although I was bummed, like he just got to. Yeah, like, he only had like table. that one cameo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, he's not even gonna have a battle. He's just gonna like yeah. bring them their drinks. It's like, yeah, like oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to me? I was like one of I was like a Pegasus level, you know. Yeah, yeah. Game owner, and now I'm like a, in a cafe. So I was like, whatever. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of find it very very fitting that darren dustin is like the prime director of the yugio series considering the fact that he voiced pegasus <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so good too like he's it's, it's fun to be directed by actors because they have an insight into you know mm -hmm. what it's like to do that and they, they can kind of get good stuff out of you and right both eric and uh darren are, are awesome directors. because yeah. so. i remember eric directed you when you was uh Raphael and valen during your time yeah, during those sessions back in the day yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And another thing I want to ask, and I'm pretty sure nobody asked you this, um, are you a, a musician? Well, I, w I don't know if I would be brave enough to call myself a musician. I, I sing in, in church and stuff, but like, okay, yeah, uh, I, I don't play any instruments and uh, I have very bad music theory, but, uh, <laughs> but I like singing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, I had a feeling like you had some kind of singing background because your range is beyond incredible. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we just talked about Duke Devlin, Raphael and Valen. I mean, you're doing three characters with three distinctive personalities and vocal performance too you know like Raphael's yeah, yeah. tough Duke Devlin's kind of laid back and Valen is more assertive like the tough not like a tough guy but kind of a a brooding type character you know yeah yeah because man I, I like I've been listening to you like over the past like 20 years I'm like that's that's him <laughs> oh wow like, <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks yeah yeah it's a yeah. lot of fun like I I uh and, and so some of that is just me being a couch potato and watching a lot of TV growing up and yeah. kind of mimicking <laughs> things, you know, and then I, I did have some great teachers growing up that really kind of like talked about using your voice as, as an instrument and how like, on, yeah. like if, if you look at like uh, on, on, on any other instruments, if, if you use different notes, they have different sounds and textures and you can get different notes out of your body, depending on where you're placing the, the resonance and the sound and stuff. Oh, so. Yeah. So yeah, so I've had some great teachers that helped me with that. So I'm glad you explained that because we're gonna move on to the bigger thing when you're uh -oh. returning on Pokemon. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I understand from from what I understand from other actors' input, and you know, I mainly listen to the actors because they mostly know more what went down during the year 2006, where four kids lost the dubbing rights to the show, and then another company took over, and then there was like a two year clause on your contract. It, it was like a whole thing that right. honestly is not, none of my business as a fan, but I respect what went down. It was disappointing that, you know, it was, it was like a very unfortunate turn of events for the actor's side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad that you managed to come back and audition for more roles and, <laughs> and thank God it, man, it, that's how I got so impressed with your range because not only was voicing characters like Saturn and then another character, a movie character from the Garantina movie, but man, your creature voices, I... Oh, thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so when you when you did came back to uh, voicing character and other roles on Pokemon, was Tom Whalen directing you at the time for a couple of years? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so like at the time you were voicing like on and off characters like Saturn, and then suddenly you start voicing creatures like mammal swine and yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I what what's the process of you create those creature voice and try to give out a more authentic act and performance as a character because you know you're not just an a regular creature just saying the name, but you gotta right, right. express yeah. It's interesting. Like it it depends. Like sometimes we try to listen to the Japanese and, and try to, you know, kind of mimic what the Japanese did. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes it's more inspired by how, how the creature looks or, you know, the animation yes. and just, you know, kind of like, you know, if, if that drawing could talk, what would that drawing sound like type of thing, you know? Um, and then sometimes they uh, will go even a third direction. That's like, we want to do something that doesn't sound like the Japanese and is very, you know, like we want to play more into this creature's attitude. Like, uh, yeah. What was the creature I'm doing lately? It's like a bird with a giant leaf thing. Uh, what is his name? <laughs> I'm trying to think too, but 
Oh. So many. I'm, I'm about to look at my cheat sheet because I know I, had, I created a collage oh, far, of far fetched. I think far fetched. Yeah, far fetched. You yeah, yeah. also so like, called sur fetched too, right? Yes, yeah, sur fetched. Yeah. So like they, uh, I think Lisa kind of directed me to kind of think of it as like almost like a very noble knight, yeah. sort of like King Arthur's. You know, so you did a good job. So that, that that was a time where it was like not really based on the Japanese or the drawing, but just like a character choice and you know so like, there's all kinds too. of like ways that they come up with characters and, and different reasons and styles so it's, it's fun yeah because the, the minute far fish evolves to surf fish and then you give them more like a noble before like surf fish yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> and another thing i saw a video um way back tom tom was at a con he's saying that you do a good job of making pig like noises like i think you're like between mammo swine Ted oh yeah 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 Big night and, and bore like you do like a little ring. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where did that where did that come from when you was working of uh, Tempe, Pig Knight, and and Boar? I don't even know. Like I think <laughs> I think it was just one of those like like I really would like growing up like watching TV. I would just mimic things, or if I heard a weird noise or a weird accent, I would see yeah. if I could like you know imitate it. So like it's probably just some of that was just like messing around and trying to kind of, you know, I saw that they look like pigs and wanted to kind of yeah. throw that in there right. and sort of <laughs> with that. And yeah. So, but I just, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I just figured out at, at a pretty young age that I could do like weird noises and, and stuff like yeah. that. And so a lot of times Tom will use me for like any kind of animal or like dog, or, you know, I did a, like a weird sea creature today and, you know, yeah. So, Still trying to locate on. some of your creatures on here. I can't even find one. <laughs> 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 it's been, yeah, also, you also voice one of my favorite Pokemon characters, uh, Sandile, Crocorock, and Crocodile. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I noticed that you gave each of those evolutionary forms a distinct for voice, like Sandile, like Sandile, Crocorock, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Crocodile, and then Crocodile. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that transition and knowing that Tom got you in the session saying that Crocorock's going to evolve to Crocodile, so you want to distinguish the voice a little bit more in, in like a deeper placement yeah I, th I think that was part of the discussion and I, I think it was um you know just as the, like it part of it is just wanting to make them distinct from their different forms right um and and a, and a lot of that is like what was like tom kind of like saying let's try this or let's try that you know and and so and, right. and like and now lisa does a great job with that as well yeah, so she... it's, it's uh <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot of uh, a lot of it is kind of co-created with them and kind of figuring out yeah, yeah, because what, Lisa, what yeah, she do a very fantastic job directing you guys and a lot of actors. And now that she, now that the um the dub is being broad broadcast in a more bi coastal setting, using talent pools from New York and L.A., yeah. it's beyond amazing how they got so many talent that I never even heard of right. coming in doing their performance, voicing their roles. It's it's an amazing job. I'm glad Lisa. I at first when I first found out that Lisa was moving moving to L.A., I thought that they might find another director for Pokemon. Then I find right. out later in May that yeah. <laughs> that was being produced at a different studio, and you know, like from like I forgot the name of the studio. But you, do you record your sessions at home or at somewhere called Golden Crest Post? Dude, you really know your stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I might go crest. Uh, I, it depends. Like some of the, th there have been episodes I have done from home, mainly because of like COVID, COVID protocols and stuff like that. But yeah. most of the time, I'm over at Goldcrest, which is pretty close to me. Like I'm only a few blocks uh, from there, okay. so it's. Oh, so you do live in the city. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. And I, I was lucky because I, I I was also when they moved to L.A., I was nervous that, well, that yeah. was the end of my run, you know, but they uh, have been kind enough to still use me on stuff. So that's, that's yeah. Really, yeah, I was great. so I was very happy that I found out that like L.A. talent, like there's a, two different studios by Coastally. It's a nice it's kind of remind me of the time with uh, what NYAB Post done and they've been yeah. doing for the past 20 years, too. So speaking on that regard. Well, how you got involved with the folks at NYAB Post? Uh, um, basically through Mike, Mike Center. Mike Center, uh, Nicholas. Owner, yeah. yeah, and like he was uh, Leonardo on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, and you were Casey. <laughs> Casey, yeah. So I, I got to know him through there. And then uh, he asked me to audition for some stuff. And I, I got to do a bunch of projects over there. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and he's, he's a super awesome guy. So I, I yeah, really he's... like to know him. It's like it's so many things. He's very, very passionate when it comes to direction, so casting, passionate. yeah, 
and yeah like loves it more than anyone else maybe in the in the industry (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah. really (laughs) pays attention to detail and you know like we'll he'll really invest even in like the 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 reacts like even if if a character grunts or has to do like a sigh Mm -hmm. like we'll do multiple takes to just get the perfect one you know (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) i really respect him because yeah because he 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 tends he tends to care about all the actors that he casts in his uh production in his production company from both locations and I know this many times from another actor told me that he's really one of the best directors when it comes to directing kids and anime doves because you know oh, I've yeah. been told by it, like it's hard to direct the child actor doing dubbing you know is yeah you know, dubbing is a very specialized technique that not every actor can do you know right yeah so regarding that um, skill was it hard doing it the first time for you oh yeah. Yeah, like it was like well, back uh, in the day too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was just learning how to like come in at the right time with the beeps and like I think like the hardest thing about dubbing is like there's a natural way you might say the line and how you might put an emphasis on a word or how quickly or slowly you might say something, but when you're dubbing, you really have to match the rhythm of of the animation. So yeah. it's it's exactly. it was learning how to phrase things in a way that it sounded natural but still matched that you know lip flap wow. and so it was definitely a skill that you had to acquire and it's not something that comes super naturally <laughs> yeah, so, um but 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 yeah like you, you you work at it and you get a rhythm and I've, i find for me like if i monologues were harder because you had to kind of focus more on the page than the animation but yeah if it's a shorter line i try to memorize it and then just focus on the animation because I had a yeah, work on um, the timing. Yeah. Yeah. And just really get, almost like really lock into them and try to like, and I found that would help me with the emphasis and the intention, you know, because <laughs> if I'm looking at their face and seeing how angry or an- excited or how right. calm they are, it was influencing. If I could stay locked into the picture, it would help me with the reads. So. Yeah. It's because I know it's like many times any actor known for doing dub work, they told me that it's a very specialized technique, like you must get it. If you don't get it right away or fast enough, then chances are you might not be catching another dub until you do yeah. your dubbing technique. Yeah, because it, it does, um, which is hard because the only way to get good at it is to get experience. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. but it is like, um, it can slow the process down if it, if it takes too long to kind of sync it up. So it is one of those things where you, you got to kind of yeah. sync with it pretty quick or, or kind of pick up, pick it up as fast as you can. And then speaking of sync, um, there's a, there are, there are three characters you did on Pokemon where you have to worry about the mouth flap, but you just got to worry about the time, which were um, the legendary Pokemon restaurant, Zephram and Kiram. Oh yeah. I was wasting um, those three characters, you know, Oh, well, excuse me. Oh, no problem. Yeah, the, you you voice these characters because you know most of these Pokemon speak to like a telepathic connection with others. Yeah. So you know, you just gotta worry about the timing with your performance, and then along with the voice placement. Because I know Car- Car- the voice you did for Karen sounded rough, and the fact that you did it for the Super Smash Bros. games too. <laughs> like your yeah. your only cue, I think it was only one cue. I think either Tom or Lisa directed you, and he's like, you just scream like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, you know, in a way, those characters were very freeing, you know, because uh, it, it's like Pokemon's an interesting thing because it, it is that thing of like, it, it reminds me of this old acting exercise we would do uh, mm-hmm. in Meisner class where you, you just say the phrase like blue eyes, but you would have cool. to imbue that that word or that phrase with all the different emotional intentions of what's going on in the scene. And you would just pick a word like pineapple or blue eyes or pizza and you in your scene partner you have a whole scene but you only say that word and i I, it always frustrated me at first but like i I learned how to like you know just let the emotions do the talking instead of the the actual word and then so then it ended up becoming very useful when we (laughs) were doing pokemon because you're just saying you know crocodile yeah you have a fun with it because many times so So, but the uh so much fun with those roles too. I mean, I hear you as like an angry, grumpy mammal trying to uh, an emotional glide score, and then <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's fun, yeah, and, it, and it's so. But then getting so then when you finally do get to do one of those like legendary ones that that with the telepathic ones, it, it's a bit more freeing because you can be a lot more oh. um, expressive and kind of like yeah. and have actual lines of dialogue sometimes, and you know, 
um, it, it's a, uh, it's like, Oh, okay. Now I, now I get to really play or, you know, cause like yeah. the, it, it is nice when you're not like it, 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 it both are fun. Yeah. They both are both techniques are fun. their own, their own kind of pros and cons, you know? So like with the dubbing, it's, it's, you feel it's fun to get the line to match the flat perfectly. And then there's a, like this magic thing where all of a sudden when you when you hear your voice coming out of that character and it's perfectly synced up it like it comes alive in a weird way so it's fun to see that yeah. happen but then when you're doing like a prelay animation or like one of the legendary ones you can play a lot more with the inflection and play a lot more with the timing and and yeah. uh, it's a little bit more freeing and, and that so that's its own reward as well as because then you yeah. can really um bring a little bit more of your performance to it uh when you don't have to worry about being so precise Right, because speaking of another legendary Pokemon, you also I think I'm I think I could be wrong, but I think you voiced one of the legendary bird Pokemon called Moltres. It's basically like a flaming bird. Was okay, that you? Yeah, I it kind of <laughs> sounds familiar. I'm I'm so bad with this. Like the directors make fun of me because I never remember anything, and like <laughs> just over the past twenty some odd years, it just all blends together. So yeah, I'll say I'll, you, you you've been right about everything else so far. So I'll assume you're right. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, I know you remember the sessions where I know it's been like between between sessions, it's been a while since you voiced this character. It's called Landorus. It's like it looked like an angry okay, like a yeah. brown character with a white kind of tuffle kind of I'm not sure if it's hair. It just looked at Cross's arm looking so angry and uh okay. Landorus. Yeah, I don't I don't remember, but okay. probably. <laughs> no worries. I'm, I'm really bad though. Like, like you're, they you're, have, you're they have to play me references <laughs> before each episode. If it's if it's one I haven't done in a couple of weeks, they have to like play me a reference of what we did. Right. Like, oh, that one, you know. So, and also, um, speaking on with your direction with with your collaboration with Lisa Ortiz, I saw a picture of you you and her at Do Art before. I think it was like one of your last sessions at Do Art. Oh yeah. Some, it was a nice picture because I think you looked kind of goofy in that picture. Oh yeah, yeah. I look goofy <laughs> in most pictures, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the one thing I want to move on to, which is I know you're a huge fan of, is Star Wars. Oh yeah, and big you're time. A huge, huge Star Wars fan. Is yeah, yeah. And I and I definitely get the passion for it because it, it is a it is a fun experience watching the movies, the animation. Oh, yeah. And also, you do a very, very good job with those audio books. Oh, I, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. In my car. <laughs> oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of Star Wars, I'm pretty sure you became an instant fan the minute it first came out back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Star Wars is one of those things where I just grew up with it. So I, I don't remember. I was born in 75. Okay. So I didn't see A New Hope in the theater, but I did see Empire in the theater. And I just, I just remember always playing with the action figures. It always, you know, being reruns on TV and stuff like that and having the videos and, you know, so it's just ever present. And it was, uh, it was definitely a big deal to me when I got to do the voiceovers for the audiobook for a lot of the audiobooks Cause, uh, that's something, you know, I did, I, I wasn't as familiar with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, um, when I worked for them. Um, but like getting to work on projects that I grew up with, like Ninja Turtles or, transformers or gi joe or star wars is is like a huge like yeah source of joy for me because it's like you know all the nostalgia of like oh wow you know <laughs> so yeah speaking of your voiceover career during your humble beginnings were you you were already married and then that's when your sons were born too at the time too was that like a tough situation where you had to juggle in your acting career and you being a, a minister at your church you yeah know, yeah and being a married with two sons is that a tough yeah it was it, I, yeah, I guess so. Like it was um, in, in some ways it was nice because a lot of my friends that had more typical office jobs, you know, it's like nine to five, they're always at the office. But like for, for me doing the animation stuff, I would have auditions and, and jobs, but you know, like there's, there's big breaks in the day where I could be around and helping out at home or, you know, or, or doing stuff that I needed to do for church. And uh, so it was uh, in some ways it was like a, a really nice uh, thing for a while. And um, it got a little, the, the super challenging part was I, I, I uh, stopped working for the church in like 2003, 2000 or 2005, sorry. Um, and then when I had to like only make ends meet through the voiceover, that was a little scarier because it was like really having to like 
scramble and hustle and you know yeah. <laughs> like skip yeah, everything so, it is a lot because uh, but it but it works because that's that's the hardest thing about the voiceover stuff is just it's all freelance so you just you never know when your next job's coming or how long your job will last for or so you're you're always kind of looking for for the next thing the next gig yeah and another thing uh, are you a martial artist too like your wife and your sons no, I'm not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a black belt that holds up my pants, but that's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no, they're they're amazing. They're, uh, they're all black belts in Taekwondo and can kick my butt. That's good. Yeah, because and also congrats on your recent book and roles that you have on the recent Star Wars animation uh, series too. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, doing that. Yeah, that was super fun, and that was because of Mike. Mike Center Nicholas got me that job, so I'll, I'll be there for that. Yeah, <laughs> he always he always looking out for you guys. That I, I yeah, you know, he's an amazing dude. I'll, hopefully, I get to talk to him in the future. <laughs> oh yeah, he you you would love him. He's 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 really great. Yeah, and another thing, I also want to dive a little in a little divergent. You also uh, a minister or a pastor? Which one do you like to identify? Minister or pastor? Oh, I guess minister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how long you been um, been a minister at your uh, church? Um. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> well, so I was I was full time a minister for about nine or ten years, um, and then I, I I I stopped getting paid by the church around two thousand five. Okay, uh, but I still I still lead uh, a teen ministry in my local congregation, and uh, I still preach every once in a while. Um, they'll ask me to kind of be a guest speaker, um, and and do that. So it's it's been uh, a while. Like it's, it's yeah, I understand. I guess, I guess I'm getting close to like you know officially I was only doing it for about nine or ten years, but like unofficially yeah. I still help out and volunteer a lot. Um, yeah, because yeah, I'm a, I'm a born again I'm a born again Christian myself too, so I understand oh, cool. like the whole idea of like giving giving much as you want to the church ministry and along with you know your self worth too with your walking faith with Christ is yeah it's definitely a journey. I don't regret taking the journey. I'm just glad that I know my self worth and my faith in Jesus Christ. You know, that's awesome. And I really appreciate appreciate your your Christian faith because it's with doing what you're doing as a father, husband, voiceover actor, your career and your self worth is truly inspiring. I want oh, to I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's really cool. <laughs> and Are you that, in college or high school? Or oh no, no, no. I, I got a job. I'm I'm 29, so you know. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you look young. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're 29 is young, but like, wow. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's the story of my life. It's, I'm, about to, I'm about to be 30 soon, so it'll be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a almost ple pleasure and privilege talking with you, Mark Thompson. I'm so happy that we had time to do this interview. Thank you so, yeah, me too. so much. Thanks a lot, Steve. It's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So hopefully I'll see you somewhere in New York City doing what you're doing. So hopefully yeah. me at a con convention one night. Oh, I would love that. That would be great. All right, then, Mike. Uh, definitely, I'll, I'll keep you in my prayers and best best of wishes with your future bookings, your family, and just and yourselves too. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, take care, Mark. Yep.